see a bit of here with this one. Fly good chicken. See advocate. G trumpet one time now. My old one. Crazy con man. Wait. And today we got Universal Yums, and it is the Emerald of the Equator. Which will be Indonesia. So, since my oldest is here with us for the first time, he gets to pick the first item. You're not supposed to look, you're supposed to just stick your hand in there and grab something. He is picking Sava Crackers. Which, let's see. They are Papa Tonk Black Pepper Cassava Crackers. Yum, a shrub, that's right, the cassava shrub, whose leaves are pictured on this yum package, grows an underground vegetable called appropriately cassava. Because of how it's grown, cassava is commonly called the tropical potato. The two are similar in that neither can be eaten raw, and they both are bland until properly prepared. I know. Extremely high in starchy carbohydrates, which is why it's primarily nu primary nutrient source for over 800 million Southeast Asians. Not bad. Okay. Like it. We can like it. We can like it. Well, apparently we got Wicked and Jinx here with us too. Yep. All right, Soda, so pick one. Be careful. No. No. Don't no. Use the come back. No. Don't use that. Yeah. Wicked. He got the vanilla layer cake. Let's see the vanilla pandan layer cake. Pandan flavored layer cake with cream filling. Grab this green goodie from your box and you'll be holding hundreds of years of history. We'll start at the beginning. Pandan is a category of plants native to Southeast Asia. For centuries, ancient Indonesians used its leaves to make everything from roots to ropes to baskets to boat sails. The leaves of one particular pandan species called Pandas hermolithiales had an especially pleasant aroma, so they used it to so they were used to add light, earthy sweetness to rice and meat. Like it, sit. Let's see. He is just walking all around. Mm -hmm. He's curious about Chuck's dad. I know, he's hungry. He's too thirsty. My hair is called the. What is it, Daddy? Hey. Sit. Look it, sit. It has a bite at the end of it. Yeah, the black stuff for him. Yeah. Which I like. Yeah, it has very coconutty, rocks, key lime kind of yeah. taste. It's actually pretty good. Actually, I don't know why I like that. Wicked, sit. Stay. Connor. What do you got here? Yuppie Noodles. <laughs> looks like a uh, gummy candy is what it looks like. Gummy? Gummy, 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 gummy. Yuppie Noodles. Sour novelty candy. It looks like Oh no, I don't want to see. Indonesian elevates the phrase oodles of noodles to a whole new level. 
take me gorgon indonesia's most common noodle dish made with thin noodles pan hey. fried and garlic yeah. onions yeah. chicken or beef then topped with a fried egg you can find it on the street in the microwave in instant form and all sorts of other places and this is the sour candy of it Break out the knife, the, the, the giant the, knife. Yep, the giant knife. Uh, oh, it's cool. Yeah. That's a Oh, that's a Oh, that beauty noodle is as sour as Oh, he got the egg. Yeah, he called it the deep water. I give it a two out of two. I like sour candy. Not sour. Just like a whole handful. Oh. Not even sour. Like sour. Like sour gummies. Not that sour. No, what? It is good. More sweet with a slight taste. Mm -hmm. What we got? Ooh! Deco wafer rolls. Choco banana. Chocolate? So the Deca Jumbo Cheese. No, that's not it. What is it? No. Oh, there it is. The Deco Choco Banana Wafer Roll. Bananas are pretty ordinary, right? Not in Indonesia where there are over 300 unique varieties choose from. Bananas originated in Indonesia back in 8000 BCE are over the past 10,000 years. Some downright wacky types have developed. The Pisang Moss, the Golden Banana, which is just about the size of your finger, puts back a hugely sweet flavor often compared to honey. Then you have the Red Milk Banana, which is the Ping Song Susu Mura, has an eye-catching red peel, pink pulp, and sweet, creamy flavor. Perfect. And there's several others. With all these varieties, it's easy to see why Nisha would inspire and create unique banana snacks. seasoning. With a name like Presta, you might think these garlicky corn nuts came together in a snap. But this yum ingredients had to travel a crazy long way to find each other. That's because neither corn nor garlic is from Indonesia. Indonesia was corn free until the 16th century when Portuguese settlers were brought, brought it over from the New World. A distance of nearly 10,000 miles. Garlic is technically native to China, but ancient chainers brought it to New Indonesia while traveling along a 7,000 mile trade route called the Silk Road. When both ingredients made in Indonesia, they were an instant success. Corn now appears in everything from spinach soup to salty fritters. They're really hard, but they got good flavor. It's like a caramelized. Almost, with garlic, yeah. yeah. So yummy. See what I get. I got a box of something. Did I give you an 
before I've had my java. If you overhear this, you know that someone nearby needs their coffee fix and fast. What you might not know, the word java actually comes from Indonesia. It refers to the country's central island, Java, where most of the world's coffee was grown during the 1700s. Today, Java is still renowned for its coffee, especially its special Arabic, uh, yeah, Arabic uh, beans that are cultivated during monsoon season and aged for over three years. The result is Yeah. The result is more mellow, less acidic coffee, which certainly serves as an inspiration behind this biscuit. Despite the intense coffee aroma when you open the package, these super thin sugar top biscuits have such a subtle coffee flavor that even non-coffee drinkers will enjoy them. Is that a challenge? I think it is. Wait, what's the challenge? It says that a even Despite the uh, strong aroma of coffee when you open them, that the uh, coffee flavor is such a sweet subtleness that even non-coffee drinkers will like. Well, they got a non-coffee drinker right here. Let's see what I have to say about it. I hate coffee. No, all y'all drink coffee. I don't. I think coffee. Coffee is good. 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 A package inside a package inside a package. Yeah, gummy. Even the name Millie Moo is a cow reference. So that's so what's with this cow obsession? It's something special to Indonesia. Millions of Indonesians, especially those that live on the island of Bali, practice Hinduism. According to Hindu belief, cows are sacred. They play a vital role in helping Bali farmers cultivate their crops and are thus treated with the utmost respect. Cows are never eaten for food and in autumn they're even decorated with flowers for Gokstami, a cow themed holiday. Some Indonesians have even risked their own lives to rescue cows from volcanic eruptions. We can't compel you to respect cows as much as they do in Bali, but bite into this fruity cow gummy and you might just have a newfound appreciation for your yard for our yard yard buddies. Do I get one? Oh, you want to take one? And there's different colors and flavors. Mm. I like the I really like this game. It is good. It's gone now. No! They made it all. Hey, I gave it to you all. I only got two. You only had two? I only had two. I only have one. Oh, you love me. What you got, Coda? What you got, Coda? 
Tic Tac Snack. Sounds delicious. Let's have a nice snack. Tic Tac Snack. Grilled beef. Grilled Ooh. beef flavored tapi tapioca, uh, tapioca snack. Open this yum and peek inside. What do you see? Little white balls that look pretty darn similar to breakfast cereal. But wait, don't douse these balls with don't douse these balls with milk. They're coated in savory beef seasoning, so that would probably be a bad idea. Don't worry, vegetarians. They're not made with real meat. So why are these crunchy nuggets so tiny and cute? It turns out there are a couple of reasons. Reason number one, they're often sprinkled on soup, adding some bulk both beefy flavor and delicious crunch. Reason number two, they're made from tapioca. Tapioca starch, yet another product of the cassava plant. Most commonly comes in itty bitty balls called pearls. Oh, there was another cake in there. You've already yeah, had that. Yeah. 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 All right, now we got the Deca Jumbo Cheese and Cheese Wafer Roll. Do you like cheese? Do you like cookies? How about cheese cookies? If the answer to that last one is I don't know, we have a great news you're about to find out. But first, let's discuss how this unusual combo came to be. Back in the late 1600s, the Dutch sought natural resources that would give them an edge in the global spice trade. They looked to Indonesia, establishing colonies there in 1603, and bringing with them the love for all things cheesy. Before long, Indonesia themselves developed a hankering, especially for ku kiju, crunchy cookies made with famous Dutch Gouda cheese. Even though Indonesia is declared independence from the Netherlands, in 1945 the cheese cookie combination remained super popular and has certainly evolved along the way. The Pissy Wafer cookie is filled with the brim of sweet, creamy cheese, perfect for satisfying Indonesia's crease and cheese crepe. Y'all break three, we break three. Gabe got half. I got some extra cheese. It's actually pretty good. It's like a cheddar. Really, Almost like a cracker with some uh, yeah, cheese. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Quite different. A little bit creamier, a little bit sweeter. Yeah. Come on, sis. I like it. chocolate and coconut coated wafer with cream filling. Whoa, did we mention that we're visiting the country that produces the most coconuts in the world? Sorry for forgetting to tell you sooner. Unfortunately, this delectable candy bar gives us perfect reason to bring it to your attention. It shouldn't be surprising that given the abundance in Indonesia, coconut is one of the most common ingredients in the country's cuisine. In Sumatra, coconut milk is used to make beef Beef curry called rendang. I just want a small piece because it's probably really coconut. Oh, yeah. No, it's not really coconut. It's good. You want my coconut? No, there's coconut. This bite is subtle. You don't want it? I'm not going to try it. Piece. Black chocolate's got a good flavor, though. Does it even taste like it? I don't taste it. I don't taste it. Well, I saw some of it on my finger. I don't care for coconut, so it's not great, but I mean, it's actually not that bad. Alright. In the yum bag, we have...
some more tamarind candy, the goulash tamarind candy. Then we have uh, Harago 2-in-1 Melon Milk Chewy Candy. And we have Yuppie Cola Burger, Cola Flavored Novelty Gummy. Cola Burger! And Gabe's going to drop them all over the all right, this is the Perigo Melon Milk Milk Chewy Candy. I got it. That's that one. Three, three, four, Hold on. We're separating. We're separating, Perigo. Roll over that. Looks like we got four of each, I think. I'm going to have a crowded patty. Yeah, I'm going to each. All right. Who wants to try the tamarind candy? This one got the hard candy? Seven. Yeah. I don't like hard candy either. I don't like hard candy either. Alright, we'll save that one. Yeah, let's save this. Alright, who wants to try the melon milk chewy candy? It's a two in one. We all want that. It's a hard, well, you might be able to split one of that. You got a knife. Woo! Hard to waste one on the floor. It's good. It's like a, um, black taffy. Black taffy or some Starburst or something. It's like a hardened milk or melon. A green watermelon. I think it tastes more like cantaloupe. Yeah, it is. Ever crave the sip of cream after eating cantaloupe? No, well, you're in for a new flavor experience with this milky melon sweet candy. Mm. That could be good. I don't So you're gonna have a burger and a cola. Alright, do you want a bun, meat, or cheese? I Oh, okay. See how they get out. 